uh, in the last video we already learned about um, natural selection which is we know that natural selection the selecting agent is environment uh, so we have three types of natural selection we just have a quick recap so the first one is stabilizing selection uh, the second one is directional selection and the last one is disruptive selection so for today purpose uh, we would like to uh, learn more under 3.1 which is uh, artificial selection Okay, for artificial selection, uh, let's have a look at the definition first. So, the definition here stated that uh, artificial selection um, refer to a selective breeding of domesticated plants and animals to encourage the occurrence of desirable traits or characteristic. So, uh, kita pergi one by one, a selective breeding. So, breeding means that um, mating between organism to produce offspring. So, a selective breeding, so means that uh, mating of the parents, means that the parents uh, selective Actually, we select the parents because for artificial selection, uh, the selecting agent is man, human or us as a human. So, we select the parents to produce offspring that we want. Okay, That's why the words here is a selective breeding. Uh, uh, which produce domesticated plants and animals. So, domesticated plants... Um, refer to plants uh, that is produced uh, for crops purpose untuk tanaman lah which is the plants uh, originally we take from wild plant okay tumbuhan liar lah so kita uh, do something to the plants um, cross um, breeding and so on so kita akan dapat domesticated plant which is uh, suitable for crops production and then for domesticated animals, so it refers to animal uh, that we use as a um, pet, peliharaan. Um, and then we use the animal um, uh, for work uh, ataupun for food source. Okay, uh, so itu domesticated animal. So later on kita akan tengok a few examples of artificial selection. So why we do selective breeding uh, for domestic domesticated plants animals actually we want to encourage the occurrence of desirable trait maksudnya kita nak produce offspring yang kita nak ada character specific character okay uh, uh, for example let's say kita nak um, produce a uh, cow okay lembu yang lebih banyak susu ataupun lembu yang lebih banyak uh, daging meat okay uh, so daripada situ kita boleh commercialize kan uh, milk dan juga meat from the cows for example okay so for artificial selection uh, because it is a selective breeding so actually it is a planned event and human act as a selecting agent. So, ini adalah satu kerja yang dirancang. Is not happen by chance or uh, naturally. Okay, so it is a planned event. And then, next point for artificial selection. Some of the selected varieties are defective because of the inbreeding depression. So, uh, sometimes uh, when we try to select uh, parents for uh, plants or animals, uh, we turns out to have a result that is not pleasant, okay? Or we have a result that is imperfect. So, we call this scenario as an inbreeding depression, okay? Later on, kita akan tengok apa contoh inbreeding depression, and then uh, for artificial selection, we will produce new breed of organism with desired characteristic for a specific purpose. Uh, ni yang saya dah cakap uh, generally awal-awal tadi lah. Ada karakter yang kita nak daripada uh, artificial selection tersebut. So under artificial selection, we have two types which is inbreeding and outbreeding. Okay, let's have a look uh, at example here. So, uh, origin uh, for broccoli, uh, cabbage, uh, turnips, kale, cauliflower 
and kohlrabi here actually origin dia datang daripada this one lah yang tengah ni uh, a common wild mustard uh, which is the scientific name is brassica oleracea okay so actually wild mustard ni dia pun uh, dia pun ada banyak jenis tapi kita ambil yang contoh di tengah ni lah so let's see Uh, artificial selection yang kita buat adalah uh, contohnya kita tengok brokoli so we select the flower buds ok uh, pucuk bunga tu kita pilih so kita pilih parents yang produce flower buds yang besar and so on and then kita try to breed uh, of those parents and then for quite some time kita akan dapat brokoli Okay, so actually dia datang daripada origin yang sama tapi kita boleh dapat different types of uh, crops. Okay, tumbuhan lah uh, untuk dikomersialize kan. So, contohnya uh, the next one adalah cabbage. So, we select for their terminal bud. And then we have turnips. We select for the roots. Kita ambil daripada wild mustard yang sama lah. Okay. And then if we select for stem, kita akan dapat kohlrabi. And then if we select for uh, flower buds, once again, kita boleh dapat cauliflower. And then for leaves, kita boleh dapat kale. Uh, so, ini adalah artificial selection. It does not happen by chance or naturally. Okay. Okay, let's move on. Uh, so, the first type of artificial selection we have inbreeding. So, inbreeding refer to uh, mating between closely related individual. Okay, so example kalau kita ambil human uh, means that marriage between relative uh, cousin, cousin. Okay, so sepupu dengan sepupu. Ataupun in plants kita refer kepada self-fertilization in plants. Maksudnya generation yang sama kita self-fertilize. Uh, so itu maksud inbreeding, closely related individual. Okay. So untuk inbreeding it is non-random mating. So as we have said before. Okay. So it is a planned event. Uh, and then in breeding, the second point, increase homozygosity in offspring. So, means that making all genes more homozygous. Disebabkan kita mating between closely related individual. So, yang rapat, sangat rapat. So, kita akan increase homozygosity in, instead of heterozygosity. So, kurang kepelbagaian di situ lah. Okay. So, apa yang berlaku bila increase homozygosity, we will increase expression of uh, recessive allele. Okay. And then, deleterious homozygous recessive allele may cause expression of an unfavorable phenotype. Uh, deleterious homozygous recessive allele means that recessive allele okay dia bukan deletion okay uh, so it refer to recessive allele that may causes expression of unfavorable phenotype uh, so mungkin daripada recessive allele tu kita boleh dapat phenotype yang unpleasant lah ataupun uh, ada flaw ataupun imperfect nanti kita akan tengok contoh And then the next point for inbreeding, reduce genetic variation or show less variation within population. Okay, uh, so disebabkan mating between closely related individuals, so we have accumulation of recessive allele. So causes organism that is produced become less adaptable to changing environment. Okay. Okay, and then the next one for inbreeding increases inbreeding depression. So, what is meant by inbreeding depression? So, means that inbred individual, means that the offspring produced uh, is more susceptible to disease. Lebih senang untuk dapat penyakit or no resistant to disease. Okay, uh, so tidak ada ketahanan ataupun kerintangan terhadap penyakit lah. And then the offspring produced usually have shorter lifespan and then less fertile and then lower fitness. So it has low, they have lower ability to survive and reproduce. And then outcome breeding is predictable. So disebabkan mating between closely related individual, usually dia punya outcome offspring tu kita dah boleh jangka lah dapat macam mana. Okay. For example, kalau kita ambil uh, sepupu dengan sepupu, cousin dengan cousin, 
uh, married together so actually we can predict uh, what the phase of the uh, of their child uh, or offspring okay for example okay so examples under inbreeding we have uh, livestock breeders such as cattle and sheep uh, ni untuk uh, commercialize ataupun boleh je guna dalam uh, in, in country ataupun boleh export keluar lah and then produce selected Uh, crop plants such as wheat, rice and oil palm so kalau Malaysia uh, specifically kita refer pada uh, rice dengan oil palm ok uh, kita antara pengeluar terbesar minyak sawit jugalah ok and then breeding of domesticated uh, animals such as cats and dogs uh, so kalau kita tengok cats for example uh, I'm more to cats uh, so kita boleh nampak banyak breeds of cats Okay, uh, so kacukan daripada ini dengan ini kita dapat uh, cats yang lebih comel and so on. Okay, and then uh, for example of inbreeding depression. Okay, uh, maksudnya uh, offspring tu more susceptible to disease and so on. So example kalau kita tengok pada domesticated cats uh, such as Persian cats ni. So Persian cats ni have faces that are so flat. Okay, so rata je muka dia. So, bila flat, what happen? The Persian cats are prone to tear dark overflow and then breathing and sinus problem. So, itu antara contoh in breeding depression. Means that outcome yang dapat kalau kita buat uh, artificial selection. Okay, uh, ataupun kalau kita buat mating between closely related uh, species ataupun individual. Uh, so, itu adalah outcome dia lah which is flaw ataupun imperfection yang boleh nampak. Sebab tak semua uh, uh, akan tunjuk outcome yang bagus. Okay? Ada outcome yang tidak bagus lah. Okay, uh, contoh uh, oil palm. Uh, let's say kita nak produce oil palm that has higher quality of seeds and fruits or fruits for example. Uh, so, contohnya kita breed between all palm pisifera which is shellless. Okay, tak banyak punya shell. And then kita crosskan dengan all palm dura species. Okay, uh, so yang ni lah which is dura species has thick shell and then thin mesocarp yang ni kuning luar ni lah. So, bila kita crosskan antara pisifera dengan dura, kita akan dapat species baru which is kita panggil Uh, bukan spesies baru lah. Kita akan dapat hybrid yang baru. Uh, disebabkan kita kacuk dua spesies yang berbeza. So, kita dapat tenera. Okay. So, tenera ni dia ada thinner shell tapi dia ada thicker mesocarp. So, yang bagusnya bila ada thicker mesocarp ni kita akan produce fruit that high in oil content. So, lebih banyak lah minyak sawit yang kita akan dapat daripada perahan buah tenera ni. Okay. And then fruits that it produce is not drop easily. So, tidak mudah jatuh ke bawah dan rosak cepat lah. Okay, berbanding dengan uh, parents dia. Okay. Okay, uh, another example of inbreeding adalah hemophilia for example. Uh, this one please do not put in your uh, exam. Okay. Uh, just an extra information for you. So, hemophilia in the royal family. So, kita ambil daripada Queen Victoria punya family which is kita refer pada Uh, England lah lagi okay, sekarang ni. So apa yang berlaku adalah Queen Elizabeth eh bukan Queen Elizabeth sorry Queen Victoria uh, during 1918 to 1901 uh, apa yang berlaku adalah dia ada hemophilia which is dia dapat daripada spontaneous mutation. Okay. Uh, so apa yang berlaku bila dia sebagai carrier dekat situ uh, bila dia berkahwin dia dapat anak So, disebabkan hemophilia ni adalah X-linked recessive gene. Um, maksudnya hemophilia ni dibawa oleh X kromosom. So, di, dia boleh dipaskan to the next generation. So, the inherited disease lah. Okay. Uh, so, anak dia yang perempuan jadi carrier juga. Tapi, uh, one of anak lelaki dia dapat... Uh, kalau kita dapat satu saja recessive allele pun uh, X-link disease yang membawa hemophilia tu uh, untuk lelaki dia terus dapat penyakit hemophilia dia bukan carrier lah uh, so kita boleh nampak dekat sini 
anak dia yang at least ni as a carrier and then anak lelaki dia sebagai uh, full hemophilia person and then anak perempuan dia kat sini sebagai carrier and then bila dia berkahwin dengan kerabat diraja yang lain and then uh, I would say uh, closely related uh, apa yang berlaku adalah dia akan pass penyakit hemophilia tu kepada uh, the next generation Okay, uh, so kita boleh nampak lah generation kedua, ketiga uh, banyak yang dapat hemophilia. Okay, uh, so kalau kita tengok susun galo sekarang sampailah yang famous sekarang ni adalah yang belah sini au si. Uh, so Prince Charles, okay, uh, rasanya ramai yang uh, familiar dengan nama ni kan. Uh, so di, starting daripada uh, Prince Charles semua ni, orang dah kahwin dengan orang yang bukan daripada royal family lah. Ataupun kalau dia kahwin pun jauh, sangat jauh dia punya relationship. Okay, mungkin tidak ada, uh, tidak ada langsung lah. Uh, related individual Orang yang dia kahwin tu So menyebabkan uh, Hemophilia tu berhenti Sampai generation yang sebelumnya Okay so It does not pass to the next generation In the royal family uh, Okay so sebab tu bagusnya Kita kahwin dengan distantly related Okay yang jauh lah Bukan kahwin dengan closely related Sebab kita nak elakkan daripada uh, Inbreeding depression Contohnya hemophilia ni lah Yang akan Uh, di pas daripada generation tu next generation okay uh, itu antara keburukan uh, inbreeding lah okay uh, marriage between closely related individual so yang saya kata tadi ni lah uh, so saya rasa Prince Diana ni memang famous and then dia kahwin dengan Charles dia dapat William dengan Harry uh, okay uh, tu and then dia kahwin lagi dengan orang yang jauh juga William dengan Harry ni dia kahwin dengan uh, distantly related individual so lagilah hemophilia tu is not passed to dia offspring unless dia orang ada hemophilia lah okay okay itu one example okay yang um, uh, agak menarik and then the next example of uh, inbreeding depression ataupun inbreeding uh, adalah Habsburg jaw. Okey jaw ni refer pada uh, bahagian dagu tu lah eh. Uh, which is Habsburg jaw ni causes the end of Habsburg reign in Spain. Okey. Um, so apa yang berlaku adalah uh, gambar belah kiri ni refer pada Charles tu uh, which is dia ni dapat penyakit lah disebabkan inbreeding depression. Uh, marriage between closely related tapi case dia ni uh, I would say sangat berat, kenapa sebab kita tengok dia punya uh, description ni kat sini his father which is Philip V uh, married his own sister daughter okay. ayah dia kahwin dengan uh, kakak ataupun adik dia punya anak perempuan, which is kita panggil incest lah dekat sini ok Uh, which is it shouldn't be okay, in our society. So, apa yang berlaku adalah bila ayah dia kahwin dengan anak perempuan kepada adik-beradik perempuan ayah dia. So, dapatlah Charles tu ni. Okay. Cuma Charles tu ni adalah uh, di, I would say uh, defect daripada uh, closely marriage. Okay. So, dia ada lower jaw. So, lebih uh, ke bawah. And then, he struggle to eat and speak. So, disebabkan jaw dia yang ke depan tu. Dan, um, uh, so, dia ada masalah untuk makan dan bercakap. And then, dia punya uh, features short. And then, weak. And then, important. And then, mentally handicapped. Okay. And then suffer numerous intestinal problem and did not even speak until he was 4 years old. Uh, so, itu antara outcome daripada apa yang berlaku lah. Okay. In breeding depression. And then he is infertile. So, disebabkan dia ni uh, not fertile. Okay. Sterile lah maksudnya. Uh, and then dia ada masalah yang kita dah sebut dekat atas. So, dia... Mati pada awal usia lah Which is at 39 In 1700 Okay So apa yang berlaku Dia ni the last male Okay Dalam susunan family dia lah uh, Menyebabkan 
uh, berakhirnya has been in Spain. So dia diganti oleh the house of Bourbon. Okay. Uh, so yang ni kalau nak baca lebih lanjut lah, boleh baca on your own lah. Okay. Uh, so ni antara keburukan lah eh. Um, I would say bukan keburukan kahwin dekat tapi lebih uh, tapi memang uh, kahwin dekat tapi lebih kepada keburukan insas itu sendirilah. Uh, so ini tak sepatutnya berlaku lah. Okay. Okay, itu inbreeding. The second type of artificial selection kita ada outbreeding. Okay, so outbreeding involve mating between unrelated or distantly related individual. So example kita ada mix ataupun interracial marriage. Okay, sangat jauh lah. Uh, contohnya uh, Malaysia dengan Indonesia. <laughs> tak adalah jauh sangat kan. Uh, tapi bolehlah kita kata itu jauh juga. Ataupun Malaysia dengan Jepun Atau Malaysia with Americans for example okay? uh, So itu antara contoh distantly related Ataupun unrelated at all okay? Tapi dah jodoh kahwin lah okay? uh, So apa yang bagusnya outbreeding ni Dia increase genetic variation Ataupun show, show more variation uh, So ini memang selalu berlaku lah Kalau kita tengok pada mixed marriage Okay Uh, offspring ataupun children yang uh, datang daripada mixed marriage ni lebih uh, banyak variety of faces and then uh, another physical features yang lain lah okay and then increase heterozygosity and then increase hybrid vigor ataupun heterosis apa maksud hybrid vigor kat sini adalah uh, offspring produce ok uh, untuk yang outbreeding anak yang dilahirkan tu kita panggil sebagai hybrid ok and then hybrid selalunya ada superior characteristic ataupun high quality compared to their parents so hybrid vigor maksudnya uh, offspring has superior characteristic compared to parent Uh, so, bila two parents which are unrelated before this or distantly related get together, married, so dia akan produce offspring yang ada kualiti yang lebih daripada apa yang parents ada lah. Uh, ni memang selalu kita tengok lah kalau kita uh, banyak search online and so on. Okay. And then uh, hybrid vigor ataupun heterosis production of hybrid that possess better quality or produce stronger individual with a better chance of survival. And then hybrid show superior quality such as early mature new to plants, uh, increase fruit size and number, increase resistant to disease, longer lifespan and more fertile. Okay, itu untuk plants lah selalunya. Okay, kalau in animals, uh, contohnya kita nak produce animal yang produce high quality of meat. Contohnya kita kacukkan antara Hampshire dengan Suffolk uh, sheep. And then let's say kita nak produce a high quantity of milk. Kita breedkan antara Jersey and Guernsey cows. Ataupun kita nak produce high quality and quantity of meat. Kita boleh breedkan antara Hereford dengan Aberdeen Angus. Okay. So, kita boleh tengok contoh kat bawah ni. Uh, Hampshire and Suffolk sheep. So, kita breed together to produce high quality of milk. Tapi, saya tak jumpa gambar uh, dia punya cross bread. And then, kita ada Jersey and Guernsey. Kita nak dapat high quantity of milk. Uh, so, dapat yang bawah ni lah dia punya offspring. Okay. Uh, so, kita nak dapat lebih banyak milk yang lebih bagus. Okay. And then kita ada Hereford dengan Aberdeen Angus. Kita nak dapat quality and quantity of their meat. Uh, so ni lah nama dia punya offspring. Kita panggil Black Hereford ataupun Black Baldy. Okay. Okay uh, kalau outbreeding untuk human. Okay so kita ada contohnya pasangan daripada Malaysia yang perempuan Malaysia. Uh, berkahwin dengan Russian Okay so dia dapat anak dua ni lah Saya rasa famous jugalah Dia orang berdua ni uh, Okay And then uh, Another example adalah Siapa yang tengok Running Man <laughs> Okay uh, Eh Running Man pula sorry A Returning of Superman Okay uh, So kita boleh nampak dekat sini uh, Pak Johor uh, Dia kahwin dengan Spanish German woman So Pak Johor ni yang lelaki lah Footballer, Korean footballer 
uh, so dia kahwin dengan Anna which is a Spanish German uh, woman so dia dapat anak lah so actually anak dia yang ni dah besar lah okay? so yang ni yang ketiga lah okay? uh, itu antara uh, contoh outbreeding okay? uh, marriage between distantly related Uh, individual. So kalau kita tengok uh, anak dia orang ni uh, boleh nampak superior quality okay? uh, mungkin lebih comel okay? uh, compared to dia uh, parents. Okay? Uh, yang ni pun sama lah for example. Okay uh, this uh, conclusion for advantage and disadvantages of inbreeding and outbreeding uh, I would say that uh, you can read on your own and I would say you will understand the summarization of advantages and disadvantages of inbreeding and outbreeding. Okay that's all thank you.